Now, Mark Golden said time come. And I'm a past labor right. Now I'm supporting the PMP. And I'm supporting them because I get tired of a labor right and the foolishness. Why does the Minister of Security still have a job on God knows? Why does the Governor General keep walking along with these people and, and, and assign these people of state of the emergency? And you want this now, think about it now. State of the emergency only affects the hard working citizens of Jamaica who pay taxes. State of the emergency only beneficial to the police and the people that are committing crime. State of the emergency is only a temporary fix but not a permanent fix. We've been asking for a crime plan and it's still no plan. Now, elections supposed to call from last week and we'll keep pushing it back because they know safe to call it when they don't have a foot to stand on. Andrew Wallace are looking to the death penalty. Bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful day. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every or uh, any situation, just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray. Because a prior day, keep the devil away. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, Andrew Wallace looking into the death penalty also mark golden speak out dr lover saying would i never vote for jlp again is now a pnp because of this and you want get rushed because of this as well people we have all of this have come up but before we get into all of this i would appreciate if you all would leave a like on this video please give this video a thumbs up that's all i'm asking for on this video a thousand likes my people also if he's a new viewers first time on my channel then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content you will be first to be notified share the content leave your opinion down below in the comment section so people make we start off the report like this and Joel says he is in the process of responding to the query from the integrity commission about his income and assets his declaration for 2021 and 2022 have not been certified, which he said left him concerned. All in it says he hoped to respond to the anti-corruption body before the end of this week. Prime Minister, your statutory declarations have not been certified by the Integrity Commission. You know, the implication of this goes far and wide. Why hasn't it been certified? And does the public have anything to be concerned about? You would appreciate that this is for the state of emergency. Well, and PM, so you don't. Those are the here. questions that we're entertaining at this time. Are you giving? Do you have Do you have questions on the state of emergency for St. James? Well, PM, we don't see it very often, so. Please let her uh, answer the question because yeah. I. Uh, um, I think that it is not fair to say that you don't see me often. <laughs> uh, because I, I have, uh, uh, we have uh, met up on several tours and other occasions. Uh, the post cap, just to be clear, the, the, the post cabinet press briefing is for the, the ministers and the various portfolios. And I, and I want to be clear that uh, on all important matters, uh, my government does provide the opportunity for information to be dispensed to the public and for our ministers to be questioned. Uh, and I'm very happy that the post cabinet is being conducted uh, routinely and consistently. Uh, as it relates to my uh, integrity declarations, uh, I too am concerned that they have not yet certified them. Uh, they have written to me asking various questions. Uh, I have provided answers and they have written to me again and I'm in the process of providing those answers. You will, however, appreciate that it does take some time, and particularly for me, uh, to get two or three days to go through matters and provide answers. I simply have to be very frugal with my time. Uh, and I suspect the same for the Integrity Commission that have to go through um, several thousands of uh, declarations. But I would expect that they would give some priority to my declarations. Um, I do hope to be able to respond to them before the end of this week. So I'm hopeful that they would do their work 
and uh, provide the nation with the necessary certification. Um, to be clear, I have tried not to comment on the issue because I find myself in an invidious position in that I have to protect and defend most, uh, most times the institutions of the country. So I, you know, my silence should not be interpreted as not wanting to address it, but I do have another role, and that role is to protect and to defend the institutions, the laws that we have put in place. So um, I'm hopeful that, uh, in short order, this matter will be resolved. By the way, you should also know that it is quite routine that uh, the Integrity Commission will write to persons over and over again. And there would be several persons whose uh, statutory declarations are not certified because they are in this continuous process of asking questions and trying to make determinations. Uh, my situation, obviously, would be public, and therefore it would cause some concerns. Uh, and so I accept and I acknowledge that. But it would not have been the first time that the Integrity Commission would have taken a long time to resolve my matters. And I suspect that as Prime Minister, uh, they would want to be very detailed in, in what they do. I would hope that uh, there is no difference in my treatment than given to others. And I really do not, uh, I would not want to think so. There is one thing I noticed about this video. The man tried to cut off this girl after she asked the PM a question. Why there is no freedom of speech in Jamaica? You can't even ask the Prime Minister one question. You said there is no time for that. Anyway, I'm glad he answered to it, but paper, Prime Minister Andrew Wallace also said he was not a fan of the death penalty, but now he's thinking about it because when he think about how the criminal them, when he study how the criminal them operate, he might think about it. So people, is it that Leoda and Noel and them people all forget the death penalty? My own view on the penalty for murder has evolved. I was never a supporter of the death penalty. But the more I study this matter and begin to understand the minds of the criminals, there are no souls there. They have no heart. They need to be removed from among us. But I'm not here to get into a, a debate about the jurisprudence on this matter. But within the limits of that jurisprudence, I believe the highest, highest penalty possible should be applied. And currently, the penalties now are not a deterrent. And there is an argument being put forward that somehow if we increase the penalties we will have overcrowding in our prisons or people will not plead guilty and seek to use weaknesses in cases and our security forces to beat the charge and that somehow there will be a backlog in our courts. There is validity in all of the arguments put forward. But I think those people who carry those arguments should be aware that Jamaica's incarceration rate is the lowest in the region. For a country that has so much crime, our incarceration rates are amongst the lowest. Could there be a correlation there? It needs to be studied. So now that Mr. Wallinis has studied the death penalty, is it that Leoda, Noel, and all of those people that are top-ranking people, if they found guilty, they will get the death penalty? That is what we want to know. Or are just poor people alone will get it? But anyway, people, say the thought and that Mark Wallin speak on the SOE 
and the crime situation that is taking over Jamaica. Paper, this is what Mark Golin has to say, my people. Yes, so this morning we learned that there's a state of emergency declared for the entire parish of St. James. You know, this is a strategy that the government has been um, relying on for the last five years. We don't think it's a valid strategy. That's why we're testing it in court. Um, we understand the need to respond very strongly to what happened uh, in Salt Spring community. And I want to extend condolences to the parents and family of the two young boys who were killed in that awful incident. You know, we heard Heroy Clark yesterday in Parliament call for a Zozo in the community. Now, the zones of special operations are something that we support, um, you know, in appropriate cases, and we feel that that would be the right mechanism to deploy here. The states of emergency, as you know, we um, do not think that they can be validly used as a policing tool. And they haven't worked because the crime problem in the country continues. What we need is social interventions to redirect use that risk away from crime and we need serious strategies for law enforcement to ensure that hardened criminals, violence producers are effectively addressed and cases are built that can hold them accountable and ultimately put them behind bars for long periods of time and we're committed to that balanced strategy. What do you think about what Mark Golin just said, people? See the thoughts on that. Leave your opinion down below in the comment section. Remember to leave a like on this video. Now, Dr. Lover did a video on him speak out and explain that he is a JLP supporter. And him explained to me why he will never vote for JLP and he want Andrew Wallace to call the election. Check it out, people. Now, Mark Golin said time come and I'm a past labor right. Now I'm supporting the PMP. And I'm supporting them because I get tired of a labor right and the foolishness. Why does the Minister of Security still have a job on the God knows? Why does the Governor General keep walking along with these people and, and, and assign these people to state of the emergency? And you want now think about it now. State of the emergency only affects the hard working citizens of Jamaica who pay taxes. State of the emergency only beneficial to the police and the people that are committing crime. State of the emergency is only a temporary fix but not a permanent fix. We've been asking for a crime plan and it's still no plan. Now, election is supposed to call from last week and we'll keep pushing it back because they know safe when we call it when they don't have a foot to stand on. Now, how much time you have state of the emergency? Who are benefiting from state of the emergency? And why does the citizen of Jamaica that are working hard and paying their taxes have to suffer on the phone of poor plan that they don't have? It's the same thing over and over. Look, look at the condition of our crime rate since the start of the year. And every time you call state of the emergency, it only changed temporary. It's, it's still a problem. The people who are committing crime still committing crime. And it's only when something happens because you want it to look good on your belt. You call state of the emergency to benefit you and your friends them. But it's not beneficial, benefiting the citizens of Jamaica. We need a plan. And at this point, it don't make sure you even try to put a plan in place because guess what happened? You know what you remind me of? You remind me of the President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Every time he give a speech, he turn around to the wall and ask, where's the stairs, where's the stairs? It's the same thing. Every time something happen and you know about it, the only thing come out of your mouth, let's call a state of the emergency and cool down, cool down the situation for a couple of hours or a day or two. And then it go right back again. And as soon as the spark again, you call a state of the emergency again. This is why people need to vote you out. You must leave it alone. It's time for you to leave office and give it to somebody who have a plan that can take Jamaica to a better place. The finance minister come out, come out and say, Jamaica economy is moving good. Like really? Where? When the minimum wage is, is, like, um, is like almost 20 US? How can people survive after that? So the man will make less than 20 US the minimum wage per day. He might go to work and then reach a work at 8 o'clock. Now you have state of emergency, so guess what happened? Police are going to stop the car because they suspect something. Now that person are going to reach work 8.30 or 9 o'clock and all of that. That causes a problem on the work floor. Right? The man that don't have anywhere to go and all of that, he don't, he don't care if you stop him or not. Why do we living in the same thing over and over and still have the same problem? And all they can come with state of emergency. You're not tired of state of emergency. This come like a tenement yard. Every day they might fight over and over for the same thing and they live the same place. You don't see that your, your leadership have failed. Totally failed when no changes now make. It's the same thing over and over. 
We need new government. We need new plan. It's time to call election. Time to call it where decision can be made. Where the citizens of Jamaica can sleep comfortable, live better, and feel better that they have somebody who's going to represent them. I'm not saying that the PMP is going to take them to the sky, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be different than what it is now. People tired of it, brother. Tired of it. State of emergency come like a broken record. We're tired of hearing the same thing over and over. We need a change. Time come. People, let's make a decision. Because this man show you that. He can't do the job. And he's not trying to give you a change where you are going better off. He needs to change, man. People get tired of it. Like, seriously? State of emergency? That's the best you can come with? As a leader? Oh, my God.